So what is PIDS? For over 40 years, the Philippine Institute for Development Studies or PIDS has been the country's foremost socio-economic think tank. It conducts rigorous and objective policy research and analyses that help the government in crafting relevant policies, plans, and programs in support of the country's long-term vision and development goals. PIDS pursues its mandate through three basic programs research, dissemination, and outreach. Through its research program, PIDS identifies and prioritizes studies, develops proposals, and conducts research on priority areas. The results of these studies are then disseminated through different platforms, publications, online resources, PIDS Corner Seminars and the Development Policy Research Month or DPRM held every September. To shed light on key policy issues, the advice and expertise of the Institute's research fellows are also sought by policymakers, government agencies, private sector, and civil society. Since 1977, PIDS has completed numerous policy studies on a wide range of development topics. This brand of service has then translated to policies and programs that have improved the lives of every Filipino. Philippine Institute for Development Studies Service True Policy Research In need of references for your research? Do you want a search engine that is easy to navigate? And do you want it free? If you are a student, researcher, or teacher looking for socioeconomic references and materials, then SERPI is for you. To access SERPI, just visit the PIDS website at www.pids.gov.ph and click the SERPI widget. Or type serp-p.pids.gov.ph. SERPI is an online database of socioeconomic studies and materials produced by the Philippine Institute for Development Studies and other academic and research institutions. SERPI has a wide variety of socioeconomic materials such as journal articles, books, working papers, policy notes, research papers, and newsletters. SERPI has 52 partner institutions that contribute publications to the database. SERPI has a wide coverage of materials encompassing 20 research themes. You can search by keyword or author, by publication type, by research theme, or year published. SERPI has more than 7,000 materials with full text that you can download for free. Enjoy searching! Visit SERPI now and follow us on Facebook. You may also send a message for inquiries. Oo, dapat nilang pag-aralan yung batas at polisiya para mas makita nila yung epekto at sulta nito. <sighs> Pag nangulit tayo, wala tayo may sasagot. Kaya dapat pag-aralan din natin. Oo, dapat nilang pag-aralan ng mga batas at polisiya para malaman nila kung epektibo ba ito sa karamihan o magiging problema lang. Kung walang basihan ng isang batas, basta na lamang ipatutupad at walang pulso na kinukuha sa mga mamamayan, eh, mahirap. Mahalagang isa ilalim sa masusing pagsusuri ang mga polisiya at programa ng pamahalaan bago pa man ito ipatupad. Dapat ring ipagpatuloy ang pagsubaybay o pagmonitor sa mga ito habang ipinapatupad hanggang sa matapos ang kanilang implementasyon. Dito pumapasok ang tungkuli na ginagampanan ng Philippine Institute for Development Studies. 
ang PIDS, ang siyang sangay ng pamahalaan na naatasang gumawa ng pag-aaral at pananaliksik at magbigay ng rekomendasyon sa mga mambabatas at iba't ibang sangay ng gobyerno tungkol sa mga programa at pulisiya sa pamahalaan upang masigurong matugunan nito ang socio-economic needs ng ating bansa. Pag pinag-aralan, mas effective! So what is PIDS? For over 40 years, the Philippine Institute for Development Studies or PIDS has been the country's foremost socio-economic think tank. It conducts rigorous and objective policy research and analyses that help the government in crafting relevant policies, plans, and programs in support of the country's long-term vision and development goals. PIDS pursues its mandate through three basic programs, research, dissemination, and outreach. Through its research program, PIDS identifies and prioritizes develops proposals and conducts research on priority areas. The results of these studies are then disseminated through different platforms, publications, online resources, PIDS Corner, seminars, and the Development Policy Research Month or DPRM held every September. To shed light on key policy issues, the advice and expertise of the Institute's research fellows are also sought by policymakers, government agencies, private sector, and civil society. Since 1977, PIDS has completed numerous policy studies on a wide range of development topics. This brand of service has then translated to policies and programs that have improved the lives of every Filipino. Philippine Institute for Development Studies. Service through policy research. In need of references for your research? Do you want a search engine that is easy to navigate? And do you want it free? If you are a student, researcher, or teacher looking for socioeconomic references and materials, then SERPI is for you. To access SERPI, just visit the PIDS website at www.pids.gov.ph and click the SERPI widget or type serp-p.pids.gov.ph. SERP is an online database of socioeconomic studies and materials produced by the Philippine Institute for Development Studies and other academic and research institutions. SERP has a wide variety of socioeconomic materials such as journal articles, books, working papers, policy notes, research papers, and newsletters. SERPI has 52 partner institutions that contribute publications to the database. SERPI has a wide coverage of materials encompassing 20 research themes. You can search by keyword or author, by publication type, by research theme, or year published. SERPI has more than 7,000 materials with full text that you can download for free. Enjoy searching! Visit SERPI now and follow us on Facebook. You may also send a message for inquiries. Oo, dapat nilang pag-aralan yung batas at polisiya para mas makita nila yung epekto at resulta nito. <sighs> Pag nanuli tayo, wala tayo may sasagot. Kaya dapat pag-aralan din natin. Oo, dapat nilang pag-aralan ng mga batas at polisiya para malaman nila kung epektibo ba ito sa karamihan 
o magiging problema lang. Kung walang basihan ng isang batas, basta na lamang ipatutupad at walang pulso na kinukuha sa mga mamamayan, eh, mahirap. Mahalagang isailalim sa masusing pagsusuri ang mga polisiya at programa ng pamahalaan bago pa man ito ipatupad. Dapat ring ipagpatuloy ang pagsubaybay o pagmonitor sa mga ito habang ipinapatupad hanggang sa matapos ang kanilang implementasyon. Dito pumapasok ang tungkuli na ginagampanan ng Philippine Institute for Development Studies. Ang PIDS ang siyang sangay ng pamahalaan na naatasang gumawa ng pag-aaral at pananaliksik at magbigay ng rekomendasyon sa mga mambabatas at iba't ibang sangay ng gobyerno tungkol sa mga programa at polisiya sa pamahalaan upang masigurong matugunan nito ang socio-economic needs ng ating bansa. Pag pinag-aralan, mas effective! Welcome to the PIDS webinar series. Before we start the webinar, we would like to give you a few reminders. For attendees, your microphone is muted upon entry. In case you have a question, the moderator will read it during the open forum. For those attending via Cisco WebEx, use the chat box located at the lower part of the screen. Click the chat icon, type your name and affiliation, and your question, and send to all panelists. You may send your questions while the presentation is in progress. The moderator will read them during the open forum. For Facebook viewers, at least two questions from the comment section will be read by the moderator during the open forum. We will moderate all questions to ensure that they are relevant to the scope of the presentation. Thank you for joining us and we look forward to your active participation. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the PIDS webinar series where we tackle development issues based on data and evidence. We trust that all of you are safe and in good health. I am Sheila CR, and I will be your moderator. For this afternoon, we will discuss the challenges and prospects of our electric vehicle industry. Compared with other countries, the use of electric powered vehicles hasn't gained much acceptance in the Philippines, despite the advantages it poses for the environment and the long-term cost savings for vehicle owners. We will find out the reasons for this uh, lukewarm response, and at the same time, we will discuss the strengths and the opportunities of uh, the industry and also ways to uh, take advantage of its uh, potentials. To formally open our event, I now give the floor to the president of PIDS, Dr. Celia Reyes. Ma'am Cel. Thank you, Sheila. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge the presence of the following. 
Department of Energy under Secretary Jesus Posadas, Director Patrick Aquino, Director Mylene Kapongkol, and Director Amelia de Guzman, and also Congressional Policy and Budget Research Department Director General Romulo Emanuel Miral, Senate Economic Planning Office, uh, Economic Planning Policy Studies Service Director Sir Cesni Tafan, Department of Budget and Management Regional Director Ricky Sanchez, Office of Transportation Cooperatives OIC Executive Director Eugene Pabualan, Department of Trade and Industries Board of Investments Manufacturing Industries Service Director Evariste Cagatan, Securities and Exchange Commission Assistant Director Noli Vien Mitano, and we also have with us our PIDS board member, Dr. Gilbert Llanto, and from the private sector, ASEAN Vice President Jeffrey Gardula. We're also joined this afternoon by representatives from the Academe, uh, University of the Philippines Virata School of Business, Dean Joel Tan Torres, St. Louis University Associate Dean April Gumnad, University of Bohol Dean Amon Dennis Tirol, Malay College Dean Jimmy Maming, Cavite State University Director Orlando de los Reyes, Polytechnic University of the Philippines Director Rufo Bueza, Southern Luzon State University Director for Physical Plant and Facilities Ronelito San Jose, Philippine Green Building Council Vice Chair Rowena Ramos, and we're also joined this afternoon by Philippine Association of Collegiate Schools of Business President Venus Agustin, Aniba Namanggagawas Agricultura National Coordinator Roland V. Val, Simeo Inutech Director Philip Pernell, Masaganang Sakahan Director Daniel Agustin. Let me also greet our guests, colleagues from the government, academe, civil society, media, private sector, as well as those who are watching through the PIDS Facebook page. Good afternoon and welcome to our first webinar for this month. In April this year, President Rodrigo Duterte approved the Philippines' first nationally determined contribution, or NBC, as part of the country's commitment to the 2015 Paris Agreement on Climate Change. It sets the country's target of a 75% reduction in avoidance of greenhouse gas emissions by 2030. The NDC represents the government's goal of modernizing and pursuing low carbon and resilient development for various sectors, including transportation, which will be the focus of our webinar. The transport sector is, as we all know, um, one of the highest consumers of fuel. As such, there's a need to explore options for a more efficient use of and less dependence on fuel to minimize harmful emissions and protect our environment. Electric vehicles or EVs are being explored globally as an alternative transport technology that lessens fuel usage and combustion emissions. In fact, there is a positive global outlook for EVs given the projected increase in their sales in the next 10 to 20 years. Vehicle manufacturers have also set targets for EV sales and production of new EV models. EVs are not new in the Philippines. From time to time, we see electric chimneys and tricycles plying the streets of Metro Manila and other provinces. The government has also implemented various programs that support the use of EVs in the country, one of which is the Public Utility Vehicle Modernization Program which aims to provide a safer, healthier, cleaner, and environment-friendly transport system. In addition, Senate Bill Number 1382, or the Electric Vehicles and Charging Stations Act, which supports the development of EVs in the country, has been approved on final reading in the Senate earlier this year. Relative to this, the Department of Energy has already started conducting public consultation on its proposed circular on the guidelines for the development, establishment, and operation of electric vehicles charging stations in the country. This afternoon, we will hear more about the country's electric vehicle industry from PIDS Supervising Research Specialist, Maureen Ann Roselion. Her study titled Clean Energy Technology in the Philippines, Case of the Electric Vehicle Industry, examined the EV industry by looking into its current regulations challenges, strengths, and opportunities. It also identified weaknesses and threats rel related to technology utilization and competition and provided recommendations on how to take advantage of the industry's potentials. We've also invited representatives from the government and the industry to hear their insights on the study's findings and recommendations. 
They will also share with us their efforts to promote the EV industry in the country and to encourage the use of greener means of transport. I'd like to thank Department of Trade and Industry Undersecretary for Competitiveness and Innovation Group, um, Dr. Fita Aldaba, and Electric Vehicle Association of the Philippines President, Edmund Araga, for accepting our invitation to serve as discussants in today's webinar. We hope that the takeaways from today's webinar will contribute to policy discussions on the country's EV industry. Thank you and have a good day. Thank you very much, Moncel. I now invite you to listen to um, our featured study for this webinar, which as Moncel has uh, mentioned, was conducted by uh, Maureen and Rosellon, a su supervising research specialist at uh, PIDS. Uh, we call her Mao at PIDS, and Mao obtained her master's degree in economics of international trade and European integration from a joint international study program uh, um, of the Iran Erasmus Mundus hosted by Staffordshire University, um, United Kingdom, the University of Ant Antwerp in Belgium, and Prague University of Economics and Business at the Czech Republic. Her research interests include trade, uh, regional integration, industrial development, and innovation. Mal, the floor is now yours. Thank you, Ms. Sheila. Um, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, our discussants, uh, Yusik Fita and uh, Mr. Araga. Um, so I will be presenting the key findings from the study on clean energy technology in the Philippines, case of the electric vehicle industry. Um, okay, so next slide, please. So the objective of the study are uh, uh, objectives are to this, uh, examine the electric vehicle or EV industry in the Philippines, uh, the current regulations, challenges faced, and prospects in the industry, and um, to present insights and recommendations based on the findings. Um, for this study, I use the SWOT. Or uh, the, which means um, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And um, I use this method to bring and process all together the um, information that I have collected and uh, to determine the challenges and prospects on the, of the industry. Next slide, please. Okay, so if we look at the um, EV sector globally, um, the out outlook is very optimistic. Um, an increasing trend trend in EV is observed in the global fleet for any type of vehicle uh, from 2010 to 2019. Um, in 2019, electric cars went up to 7.2 million globally, which is a huge increase from 450,000 sales in 2015. And the projection by Bloomberg and EF shows that there will be 26 million electric cars in 2030 and 54 million in 2040. And also, uh, EVs will compose 58% of total vehicle sales in 2040 and 31% of global fleet. Um, electric vehicles or EVs have gained attention as uh, governments aim for clean and low carbon transport. Um, it show, also shows advancement of technology in the automotive sector. Um, and for the Philippines, uh, aspirations are, are similar. We would like to reduce dependence on fossil fuels, which has tendency to have uh, fluctuating prices. We want to minimize um, harmful emissions and waste to protect the environment. And we also want our industry to grow. Okay, so um, adoption of EVs is encouraged by countries through uh, granting of incentives, implementation of uh, tighter regulations on emissions. Um, governments have announced uh, specific goals for the industry. So it could be uh, in terms of EV sales or dates for banning um, internal combustion engine sales. So yung the traditional uh, vehicles or both. For the Philippines, the target is that uh, EVs will comprise 21% of sales by 2030 and 50% by 2040. Um, another example would be Singapore, which uh, will phase out the uh, traditional vehicles by 2040. Next slide, please. So, dito naman po tayo sa Pilipinas. Uh, so, here we have uh, data from LTO. 
uh, which shows uh, the stock of EV from 2010 to 2019, uh, which totals 11,950. So, kung siguro pa kung isasama yung unregistered, uh, there will be more uh, numbers. Okay, so majority of e-trikes, majority, sorry, are e-trikes, uh, which is 57%, and uh, e-motorcycles, which is uh, 36%. Next, please. Um, and uh, here a bit of uh, uh, profile of the industry. Um, so uh, EV uh, players, industry players in the Philippines include 28 vehicle manufacturers. Eight of them have foreign equity, um, 11 parts and components, manufacturers, and seven um, important uh, importers, dealers, and traders. Um, so I, I sourced this from a roadmap from EVAP uh, a few years ago. So baka merong update from, uh, from our discussion later. Um, anyway, so we have um, also in terms of models as of March 2019, uh, 15 for each jeepney, 21 for each trike, 11 for electric cars, 61 for uh, motorcycles. And uh, in terms of outlook, uh, in 2019, EVA projected that um, EV sales will reach 200,000 units by 2025. And in the same year, the government targeted 200 uh, charging stations uh, uh, in uh, SM and Shell outlets by 2022. And as mentioned previously, the uh, target is 21% uh, of vehicle sales uh, are EV by 2030 and 50% by 2040. Uh, next slide. Okay, so um, uh, for this uh, paper, I made or I had a compilation of the uh, industry structure and value chain. Um, this is based on the automotive value chain by the DTI and uh, a couple of studies on uh, EV. Um, so the value chain starts with the uh, design and development and ends with uh, consumers and after sales service. And in between, we have uh, vehicle manufacturing, which involves the parts and component suppliers, so material suppliers, manufacturers. And then there's uh, marketing and sales and um, suppliers of complements, which uh, an example is uh, charging facility. So um, those listed here are uh, parts of the supply chain, which we have, we have strong local capacity, especially those in bold letters. Um, the list here is based on a study that was um, commissioned by Mitsubishi Corp. in 2019. So, uh, so in terms of strong local uh, capacity, we have wiring, mechanical components, aluminum components, rubber and plastic components, uh, chassis, uh, system, electrical system, interior system. In terms of vehicles, e trucks and e GPs, and then there's uh, marketing and sales. Uh, next, please. Okay, so uh, pagdating naman po sa mga policy, uh, meron po tayong mga programa, mga batas na sumusuport sa industriya. At um, ang ilan po doon na nandito, uh, uh, listed in, here, uh, in the slide. Um, so I won't go into details. Um, but to summarize, um, they aim for uh, provision of fiscal and uh, non-fiscal support, um, standards for product quality and safety, uh, also um, reg uh, regulatory framework and strategy for the industry. Next, please. Um, okay, here are just some photos of uh, the e-vehicles we have. In, in the country, so may e trike. Uh, what else? I have a picture of uh, e jeepney and then uh, e bike and e motorcycle. Next, please. Okay, so now I'll uh, discuss the findings from the SWOT. So, in terms of uh, strength, um, there is a strong government support in terms of programs, policies, and projects as uh, shown in the 
previous slide. Um, the industry has also been very active in advocacy in uh, participating in the government programs and in manufacturing activities. Um, if I may men mention some accomplishments, one is the tricycle replacement program of the DOE, which employed um, uh, deployed to different LGUs about 3,000 e trikes that we that uh, were produced by uh, DMAC, DEMAC, a local electric tricycle manufacturer. And then there was also the ADB project, which deployed e trikes to uh, Metro Manila and other key urban areas. And then uh, the partnership between EV firms or uh, and the private sector also shows strength. Um, so uh, examples are uh, the joint venture in 2015 between uh, Rupali Corporation, a uh, top motorcycle dealer in the Philippines, and Peco Electric Machinery, which is a Taiwanese company that develops and manufactures electric motors. Uh, their uh, partnership Proteco aims to produce e trikes and e jeepneys. And then there's also a partnership uh, between Toho or Tojo Motors, a lo uh, local manufacturer, with a Changshu High Star bat Battery Manufacturing Company, uh, which is a Chinese firm, for the local assembly of EV batteries. And then there's a partnership. Uh, between Mitsubishi Corporation uh, and Beralco, which aims to build pre charging stations in for DTI and DNR offices. And then uh, the country can leverage on its capabilities in auto electronic parts and components um, and also semiconductors manufacturing as well as automotive assembly. The country has been a key manufacturer and exporter of wire harnesses which is a vital component of uh, electrical systems in vehicles. And uh, we have local EV manufacturers. So I mentioned the um, BMAC or B, I'm not sure how to pronounce, B-E-M-A-C, PSUV, Pinoy Aho Corporation, Star, Toho, Toyota Motors, which um, CC produce e trikes and e jeepneys. Uh, e so, uh, to some extent, there's uh, capability in um, EV product development and manufacture, which can be exploited and updated. And then there's a uh, consumer uh, perception and enthusiasm, which is also one strength. Uh, for the Philippines, uh, this is based on uh, in a market research by Nisan and uh, for us in Sullivan in 2018, it was revealed that 46% of Filipino consumers are open to buying EV as their next vehicle. The next uh, slide, please. Then uh, witnesses. The so first is a uh, low level of technology utilization in manufacturing and infrastructure. Um, I'm basing this on the smart uh, manufacturing Maturity Index based on the 2019 firm survey by the DPI, and uh, which uh, suggested that 79% of respondents are in levels from very low to low technology utilization. Uh, but to be fair, Dina Mantona, we our, our um, innovation performance is improving. We have a better ranking in the Global Innovation Index in 2020 and an increase in uh, our index expenditure to GDP ratios. It's 0.35%, uh, so from uh, 0.12 or 0.14 in previous years. Um, okay, so in the uh, Global Innovation Index, it was noted that we performed better in innovation outputs than innovation inputs, um, but uh, we uh, performed below average in institutions, human capital, research, infra, uh, market sophistication, and creative inputs. Um, I think that the government recognizes this and uh, is coming up with strategies for improvement. And then uh, next is uh, low number of charging stations. Um, 
Well, yung, yung uh, data ko po is from 2018, uh, which is 19 charging stations. Um, so, I'm not sure. Uh, well, meron po naman siguro mga additionals. Um, okay, so there's no standard prescribed ratio of uh, EV to charging point. But uh, experts and researchers say that it would range from 8 to 33 EV vehicles per charging station. So, if... Um, I were to look at the 2018 figures, I think uh, we are quite far from those numbers. Um, even if we consider, for example, that most uh, vehicles would be charged at home. And then there's uh, consumer concerns. Um, a first and Sullivan survey revealed that pinch anxiety, uh, which refers to how far the vehicle will go and safety are top concerns of potential EV buyers in ASEAN. Though, um, well, with developments in the sector, uh, mini compact cars could uh, run for 100 kilometers. Um, the mid-size or SUVs could uh, run for uh, 200 or 300 kilometers. Um, an e-trike, uh, 35 to 50 kilometers. And uh, there are models that can run up to 100 kilometers. Next, please. Um, the opportunities, um, the positive outlook, uh, global outlook and the production of EVs and uh, the overall global trends in electrification in the transport sector provide high prospects for the EV industry. Um, so for the country, it can perhaps take part in the EV value chain in Asia which would be expected to be large as China has been leading the um, EV production sale and sales, uh, the construction of charging stations as well. And uh, other countries in the region, such as Japan and South Korea, are also expected to have large production in electric cars. And then there's uh, also investment prospects for battery production in the country. Uh, being one of the top suppliers of nickel ore, which is a uh, raw material in EV batteries. Um, this has been identified, uh, recognized by EVAP and the nickel uh, mining industry, which has uh, started talks with um, the China Battery Association to explore the manufacture of lithium, uh, lithium ion batteries in the Philippines. And uh, related to batteries, uh, there are also projections, projections that the uh, technological advancements and presence of um, supportive policies to EV could address concerns about battery prices. And then um, uh, cross-border partnerships uh, between firms or industry associations uh, serve as channels for transfer of technology. Um, we've had um, examples of partnership between Filipino and foreign firms. Um, the EVAP also led the creation of the ASEAN uh, Federation of Electric Vehicles Associations, which uh, is regarded as a venue for sharing of uh, best industry practices, R&D initiatives, as well as networking uh, that have so far resulted in uh, joint venture projects. Then, uh, I, next slide, slide please. Okay, so um, uh, threats. Uh, so one is the high cost of um, EVs. Um, so the, the projected cost multiplier based on the uh, Mitsubishi study is for the full electric vehicles, it is 1.7 to 2.3 twice as much as the traditional vehicle or conventional vehicle. And then the hybrid for hybrid, 1.4 to uh, almost two, twice the price of conventional vehicles. Okay, um, then as for the battery, um, it is more than 50% of EV cost. Um, uh, vehicle and battery producers are observed to be sensitive to raw materials and so uh, could be affecting uh, the pricing of EVs. Um, so, uh, if we look at energy costs, uh, 
um, in again the study by uh, um, Mitsubishi. Um, if you look at the uh, life cycle of an EV, it's it was projected that uh, the EV is competitive as the uh, uh, energy cost is lower compared to fuel powered vehicles. Then, given the projected um, growth in EV production, there are also concerns about the um, adequacy of carbon infrastructure. But um, with you know technology and uh, ported policies, it is anticipated that concerns about the infrastructure could be addressed. And uh, so now, uh, utilities, um, oil and gas. Companies and automakers globally have been um, actively installing uh, charging facilities. And as of 2019, there are um, around 850,000 charging points, which is 60% um, increase from 2018. Um, although we have this challenge, our country is somehow in an uh, advantageous position, I and mean, given the uh, presence of EV technology in the region. Uh, China is, uh, like I said, leading in um, EV sales and charging infrastructure. And then we have Japan, Singapore, and South Korea that are among the top uh, countries in charger intensity. And then uh, last for this slide, what I think uh, the country must prepare for is the increased competition in inward, um, inward investments in the region. Countries should be keen on hosting investments in the EV technology and the value chain. Uh, for instance, um, countries in ASEAN that have abundant natural resources used as raw materials in battery manufacturing, and also those that already have um, a close economic partnership with top producers uh, in Asia. Okay, so. Next, please. So, this is my last line. Now. Okay, so to conclude, uh, there is potential for growth, um, given the support from government and active engagement of the industry and private stake, uh, stakeholders, and uh, also the manufacturing capabilities. Uh, but the country is faced with uh, relatively uh, low technology utilization and general concerns about the EV infrastructure. Um, as well as strong competition for investment. And uh, based on these findings, um, the following are recommended. First is uh, to fast track the, or consider as priority the deliberations on the EV deal. Um, this uh, uh, an EV law will set the national policy and overall framework for regulations uh, that related to uh, standards, uh, incentives, infrastructure, and others. Um, it can also signal investors that the industry is a priority area for industry development. The industry is uh, fast moving, and um, in order to be to not be left behind, including uh, the bill and the priorities would be crucial. And the next, um, I think the. The DTI is already doing this best, but to just uh, reiterate the, I think the importance uh, of uh, developing market and feasibility studies for uh, manufacturing prospects. So this would include the battery manufacturing roadmap, the charging infrastructure plan, um, that would all link to the comprehensive um, EV roadmap. And if also the, um, country could explore a uh, possibility of focusing on a specific type of uh, EV vehicle, so maybe a passenger car or um, a bus or truck or e tech or others. And then we can make our country a manufacturing hub for that product. Um, then uh, another uh, recommendation would be an uh, establish an EV strategy committee or council, um, which is composed of representatives from government and the private sector, um, uh, which uh, would lead the defi definition of goals and plans for the industry. Um, ang 
nakita ko po kasi doon sa EV bill is that um, uh, there will be establishment of dedicated offices but in the different government agencies that are uh, part of the the bill uh, for example DOE, DOTR, and DTI uh, for the implementation of the law of EV law. So I think kapag tiwahiwalay there could be um, challenges in terms of coordination. And then this uh, council could be connected to a network. So it's not only um, government and EV manufacturers, suppliers and distributors, but also um, other entities. Uh, for example, NIDA, which is uh, an important partner for uh, public awareness on EVs and other um, partners um, could be power companies, uh, financial institutions, and non-government as, as uh, organization. And then um, also to consider fiscal incentives to stimulate consumer demand. Um, could be, uh, the data says uh, we have mostly e trikes and e um, uh, so wala masyadong electric cars. So probably there could be um, incentive packages or uh, for, uh, for example, for EV purchases, uh, for charging points, for electricity consumption, or uh, scrappage or recycling of all vehicles. And um, and then lastly, we could uh, include EV sector in the areas for technical cooperation and trade missions, for example, as uh, they would provide um, opportunity to upgrade the knowledge and skills of the country's workforce and uh, also uh, gives, uh, provides opportunity to explore partnership with local EV players and uh, foreign direct investments for the country. So next, I think that's the last slide. Thank you very much. And thank you very much, uh, Ma, for your um, uh, very interesting uh, presentation. So I was looking at the chat box and right now it is already teeming with uh, questions, very um, interesting questions. Uh, but don't worry because we will have um, a, um, you will have the chance to have your questions answered during the open forum. Okay, so at this point, um, let's hear uh, the uh, the comments of our discussion so to enrich our discussion we invited experts to comment on the study on, and also provide their insights on the issues uh it uh tackled by um mao so we will hear first from um the government side and um our uh, first discussion is uh, none other than the undersecretary for competitiveness and innovation um, of the Department of Trade and Industry, or DTI. And she fulfills a key role in the formulation and implementation of the uh, inclusive in innovation industrial strategy, which puts innovation at the heart of the country's new industrial policy. She leads DTI's initiatives in preparing industries for the fourth industrial revolution and digital transformation, as well as in establishing regional inclusive innovation uh, centers and in growing a robust startup ecosystem in the country. Before uh, joining uh, the DTI, she was Senior Research Fellow and Acting Vice President of PIDS. Friends, I now give you Undersecretary Rafaelita Aldaba. Thank you, Sheila. Um, okay, let me, I, I just want to uh, share my uh, screen first. Um, so good afternoon, uh, everyone. PIDS President, uh, Dr. Celia Reyes, Mr. Ed Araga, colleagues from government, uh, as well as from PIDS. Uh, we lost um, Yusek Aldaba. When? Yes, I think uh, we lost her. Okay, let me just turn off her video. Please. And perhaps uh, we can share her PowerPoint instead. So.
Hi, Fita. We lost you. Is she still with us? Oh, yes, she is. Okay, perhaps we can um, hear, um, hear from uh, our next uh, second discussion first. So Yusek Aldaba will have time to uh, reconnect. Okay, okay. Okay, so let's hear first from our uh, uh, discussant from uh, the private sector. And uh, he is the president of the Electric Vehicle Association of the Philippines, or um, EVAP, which is the official organization of some 55 major players in the EV industry in the country. And as president, he represents uh, the EV industry in congressional hearings to tackle proposed bills on the use of electric uh, vehicles and establishment of electric charging stations. He also advocates for the passage of the electric vehicle and hybrid incentives bill that will grant fiscal incentives for both manufacturers and users of EVs and hybrids. I now give you Mr. Edmund Araga. Mr. Araga, Good afternoon. the floor is now yours. Good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon, President uh, Salia Reyes, uh, Mam Yusek Fita, and uh, viewers. Uh, it is my pleasure to be one of the discussants on the, this uh, today's event, and allow me to uh, share with you our industry perspective based on Ms. Rosalion's uh, studies. So, next slide, please. So we're going to discuss some realities on the ground and some comments on the SWOT analysis given by the uh, researcher. And then uh, we also would like to take a look at the Egypt setup and its summary. Next slide, please. So some realities. Costly initiatives, some e trikes and Egypt's local manufacturers providing investments beyond the production to enable market adoption of the vehicles. Uh, as we see it fit, uh, private sectors or manufacturers step, uh, made a first step or even second step in uh, promoting the electric vehicles as per se, not only on the manufacturing alone, but on the complete setup where they engage uh, coordination and cooperation with the fleet operators, with the local government units, in uh, enhancing the green routes, in establishing such, in, prom uh, in introducing to the, uh, the drivers that are so very difficult because um, the resistance to change of the users or the Egypt operators or tricycle is very high. And difficult market, a couple of more progressive transport cooperatives have adopted EVs, but only after EV supplier provided financing support. Uh, as mentioned, the manufacturers are trying to head, head uh, headway towards on add, add on uh, the how can we offer it to the market in person. But commercial banks are not open on having a financing schemes in deploying such. So most of the manufacturers have difficulty on of financing its uh, production and its uh, stocking of the, the units. And in the survival mode, only one EV ma uh, uh, manufacturer from several, a couple of years back. And it's very hard to, to survive in this kind of situation we're in. We are only based on the Indian ordering. And at present, there are no takers yet on getting such bulk orders. So we tend to use um, uh, not to pile up our inventories so as not to scale up our capitalization and how to manage and um, sustain people around us that we created jobs to people, uh, the employment uh, uh, that we can provide to them daily. So those were the things that are very difficult. Next slide, please. 
Now, in terms of, uh, uh, wait, uh, before anything else, uh, I would like to uh, 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 add on to uh, Ms. Roselion's report that at present, we are now at 12,965 registered vehicles based on the 2020 uh, registered vehicles uh, under Operations Division of Land Transportation Office. And there were about 136 charging stations already at least, wherein AC charges were at 126 and DC charges were at 11. And there were some 11 swapping stations nationwide. Now, going back, in terms of strength, strong government support is still a question. Although there are there were already some programs that were being stated by the researcher, uh, there are still uh, some lacking of uh, support in terms of incentives, incentivizing the industry. As per se, we're in most of the manufacturers are in the SMP, SME levels, and they have a hard time to compete with the one with, with the large competitive. Uh, large uh, manufacturers who are more capable enough in terms of capitalization and in terms of network. And we just want to emphasize that the, the effectiveness of the industry in other countries were merely because of the incentives and subsidies being given by the government sector, uh, pledges them to, especially on the SMEs, uh, specifically like for instance in India, uh, they have a separate uh, incentives for startups of small and medium um, enterprises who are into electric vehicles. So this is a good opportunity for them to uh, to size up or what what would be the uh, what is in store in the electric vehicle industry. Presence of local EV manufacturers, there, there's only one, two firms assembling EVs locally and barely surviving. As mentioned earlier, uh, they have a hard time on maintaining their people, their plan, their setup, and how to, to make amends and uh, address the issues on concerning on uh, getting, its th getting its thing done. Well, in terms of active industry association, we are very grateful and thankful that uh, you acknowledge our, um, our, particip our active participation through the collaboration with the government sectors. Uh, with different government sectors programs, we were able to reach out a uh, win-win situation between government and private sectors. Partnership established between the government and private sector, as mentioned earlier, uh, there are some programs that we collaborated with. Like, for instance, with the Department of Energy, with the Department of Trade and Industry under Bureau of Philippine Standards also, we were established on Technical Committee 89 on establishing standards and guidelines. Those are the things that we were able to address. And then in terms of zero tariff on components, parts, and accessories, this is under eligible only to EO226 and other MBP, MBDP registrants in which most Local EV players are not due to investment threshold. So actually, some of the, the one who availed of this program expired already because uh, that is on a time basis, timeline basis of five years to six years. So no special incentives for EVs. It is uh, of the same approach with uh, the ICE manufacturers. No, So tax holidays on, uh, on, on shipments of uh, uh, machineries are just one of it. And it is a capital intensive uh, approach on, especially on the MVPP program, wherein it comprises of about eight to $10 million uh, for you to, to avail of this program. And in terms of manufacturing capabilities useful in EV sector, uh, our manufacturers, our local manufacturers, were are at par, but presently, if there is no economies of scale uh, that they can have some smart production capabilities or set up, that would be a difficult one. And in terms of indent ordering, that would be a big, big blow in terms of setting it up on the production side.
high consumer outlook, not without the necessary incentives. So we're still waiting for the the fiscal and non-fiscal incentives that we are looking for for manufacturers and the consumers. Uh, next slide, please. In terms of weaknesses, it is relatively low level of technology utilization in manufacturing and infrastructure. As mentioned before, uh, EV manufacturers have difficulty on addressing a very uh, ideal manufacturing setup if there would be no value or the production would be not con on a continuous mode, meaning how to sustain such a high cost of uh, manufacturing or um, capability to producing a lot of units if there is no demand. So that's one of the things that uh, we cannot uh, fully utilize and uh, address on the skills of the people of how can we uh, produce such uh, locally if there are only a number of units that can, can be deployed. Low number of charging stations, as mentioned, uh, charging stations were at 136 and most of it are on the AC because uh, for the last decade that we're doing it, we address on public transportation and the key factors are on the e-trikes e and exits. And on it, it is only now that uh, scaling uh starting to uh uh to come up with the uh, with the uh, e-cars uh place and people are uh, the consumers are now uh, uh openly accepting uh, in having some interest on in buying an alternative cars which is an, an e-car as your as their daily uh, form of uh, commuting so another consumer concern is on using evs if we tend to uh, have a, a pile up of promotions from the academe, from the from the private sectors and from the government, and we still have some a lot of improvement on that aspect. Inadequate pub, PUB subsidies are slow, and only uh, two banks are available: BP, uh, DBP, and Land Bank, who are so only capable of uh, uh, catering the PUB modernization program and the extension of the financial support is uh, very, uh, very capital int intensive and very hard to avail. Absence of government EV purchases, incentives, and subsidies. This is part of uh, uh, the, uh, the one that uh, that is uh, included on the Senate bill, uh, wherein we are hoping that government uh, should buy, uh, take a turn and buy some EV, uh, EV locally manufactured EVs. So that uh, we in promoting on the industry and promoting the, the usage locally, and its development, uh, absence of government infrastructure development incentives and subsidies, uh, as per the the study, we only rely on donations uh, that are being given by some uh, private sectors uh, that were coordinated with the the government's uh, in government uh, infrastructures, uh, such as on the charging stations. Uh, that's one thing that we have to address with. Lack of scale for more cost-efficient production process. Uh, we can scale it up if there are uh, really uh, a promising production line that uh, we can lower down the cost on, on, on number of units that can be deployed. So we have to address those issues. And lack of local demand hinders local manufacturing investment on EV supply chain. Later on, I'll show you the supply chain uh, that we have to add on uh, on the report of the researcher. MDDP investment threshold is too high and limited financing capacity as mentioned and poor access to higher technology materials, parts and components from Japan is due to high tariff. Uh, we are only bending on the China brand but now we are also looking, hoping that we also have an access to Japan, Europe and US who have higher quality uh, product lines that can be uh, offered to the market and uh, the the barrier is on the on the tariffs that uh, we are uh, addressing at present right now during the EV uh, EV laws. Difficulty to attract OEM manufacturers to high production costs, lack of competitive investment incentives and poor supply chain and unclear local demand projection and most especially the higher power rates, we are the number two, one of the top 10 uh, in Asia and in the world in terms of higher power rates. Next slide, please. 
opportunities. Uh, battery manufacturing could remain as a myth as local reserves are not good enough for EV batteries. Uh, nickel ores available here has to have an additional process in order for it to be considered to such you know, producing lithium ion batteries. Another h pulp plant would be very expensive to build and run and may be justified only with a massive local battery demand. In creating a demand, one has to produce a lot of EVs on the road. Participation in value chain in Asia and the world? Well, we are trying to make a network, as mentioned. Uh, we are trying to make it on a regional level with uh, co collaboration with the ASEAN members and hoping that we can all uh, reach to other nations. Support for R&D? Well, we do have some R&Ds um, through the efforts of the OST, but we still lack on it because the technology is fast and we have to uh, size up on what would be the new trends in the technology. Cooperation, technology cooperation currently non-existent but possible with proper policy support. Senate Bill House version DOE regulations and LTO regulations were mentioned. And EVs, as we'll, uh, I think we'll highlight by uh, USEC Vita later on. And the interest for multinational EV charging network operators is highly recommendable. Increasing number of OEMs EV models introduced locally. Next slide, please. Threats. Industry could not wait any longer with required policies and support. We are lagged behind with Thailand and Singapore, and, uh, and they are already uh, on spot with, uh, through the strong policies that they implement on such countries that uh, I mentioned. So we have to kind of scale up and fast track or whatever we have can that whatever we can produce cheap evs particularly from china and if only incentive is only applicable for local manufactured units and not imported to china next slide oh do i still have time yes uh, it's okay um mr edmund you you may uh, proceed I, I think this is a very important slide all right uh, okay, on, on this aspect, uh, we would like to address the issue on the value chain situation there, wherein we have to uh, expound more of what uh, the researcher had mentioned. Uh, we created on this uh, uh, extensively, so as you could be aware of, of what uh, what is the, the value chain situation at, at the moment. So in terms of vehicle design, in terms of component and module production, in terms of assembly, in terms of financing, in terms of market and its operations. These highlighted factors uh, were, has to be considered in order for us to establish such. And uh, we, we, we highlighted each and every components that uh, would uh, consider on, on establishing uh, our value chain in terms of producing Egypt needs. Now, in terms of the value chain, it has a different aspect in terms of if we call, this is only on Egypt. If we can uh, value it on EBAS, on ETREX, that's a different scenario as well. There are some commonality, but we, we are emphasizing on the Egypts. Can you make uh, the next slide, please? So in terms of the Egypt, this is the um, flow chart that uh, we are trying to uh, emphasize on low adoption of Egypt. These are the items that we want to address with uh, on what are, the, what are the concerns. Why is it lacking? Why is it that we cannot pull through? Why does uh, Egypt cannot move on into it? Because we are banging bodies with uh, the ICEs. And in terms of such fleet operators are very hesitant on, on, uh, on the new setup. They would just rely on what, what would be the, the possibility of having it on a cooperative approach, um, cooperate, cooperation, set up fleet operations, but still manage on, on, on the same approach. So these are the items that we want to emphasize uh, that has to be given value. Next slide, please. Main points, uh, second to the last, uh, this would be my last presentation. And 
And the challenges could vary from one market segment to another. Thus, EV development strategy should be segmentized. Uh, we have to look into the value of e -Gifs, as per se, the value of e trikes as per se, and the value of e-bus, if there is any, and the e value of e e trikes or e-bikes. Segmentation is the key in giving such emphasis on, on, on its setup. No, that's the main challenge. And the resistance of each and every users are very high. Challenges are multidimensional. The solution needs to be integrated. In terms of integration of coordination with the local government unit, with a solution that can be given by the private sector from its fleet operators through the manufacturers, the validity of such is important. And in terms of program, quota, and time-bound based government incentives, incentives are needed at the very least. We all know of that even in other countries, incentives or subsidies are time-bound. So if we're going to make a, a, a value or a very creditable um, uh, program, say, for example, uh, first 5,000 that can be produced on such like Egypt, this is the incentives that you will get, additional incentives, so that we can create a supply side and a, va um, a valuable um, program that would uh, the market or the consumers would uh, would be enticed to to buy or to to agree with or to avail of. So those are the key main points. Thank you. And next slide. Oh, uh, some activities what that we do. Uh, this is uh, we just uh, we just want to take uh, advantage of what we are doing as as an association. We have a monthly meeting with the TC eighty nine BPS and also TC forty four and uh, subcommittee twenty one under the Bureau of Philippine Standards. So we still have a lot to work in the uh, guidelines or and standards of uh, the e vehicles and its infrastructure. And it's last it's just last year that they created technical committee eighty nine uh, credits to uh, Department of Trade and Industry under Bureau of Philippine Standards. They established one separate individually to the ICE. And then we participated as part of the technical working group of UNDP, low carbon urban transport system in producing green routes in each key cities. I think we have four already and looking for eight, another four. And then we also have on an internal, uh, on, on international global EV alliances. This is on a scale up of promoting COP26, uh, certificate of, uh, in, for the Treaty Paris uh, Agreement. And also the Gayan in terms with the uh, South Korean uh, collaboration. And last is the AFEBA, ASEAN Federation Electric Vehicle Association, wherein uh, your story is the president. Next slide, please. And good news for the new proponents of the new electric cars. Senate bill is approved already, and we're just uh, waiting for the counterpart on the Congress, hoping that this month, uh, they would address and approve it. So, and it have to be married and have it to become a law. So, those are the things that we want to address. Uh, hoping uh, that the House Bill number 4078 would be approved. Next slide. And the last would be on the administrative, just last week, Administrative Order 2021 on 039. Uh, this is under Land Transportation Office cons uh, on consolidated guidelines in the classification registration operation of all types of electric motor vehicles wherein we were part of drafting this uh, administrative order for us to categorize uh, each and every e vehicles on the road and giving emphasis on 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 the e mobility to the l2 to l4 units that would be established in adopting the international standards that we have already established through the ASEAN region level with the efforts of United Nations Environmental Program. So that's it for me. And ah, no, last thing, we would like to take this opportunity to invite you on August 26 to 27 on our ninth Electric Ele uh, Vehicle Summit, which would happen virtually. So hoping to see you there. Thank you.
And thank you very much, uh, Mr. Edmund Araga, President of uh, the EVAP, uh, Electric Vehicles Association of the Philippines. Very important points you um, discussed, sir. Um, in addition, um, very important points uh, that you discuss. in addition to the SWOT analysis uh, presented by our researcher to help us uh, better understand and um, have a uh, more complete picture of the electric vehicle industry in the Philippines. Okay, so at this Michelle, point, yes, sir. Uh, one one additional thing, since I've I've seen uh, Mam Mamfita, okay. she's our uh, mother champion in terms of uh, establishing the roadmap back in 2014, and she was then before at uh, PIDS, I think, uh, during that period, and we are very thankful for Miss Pita, who is always behind us, and would like to take this opportunity to highlight it. Uh, to Ms. Rosellion's uh, research, part of the research program. Thank you. And thank you, uh, Mr. Edmund. That was a very up description to call, to call uh, 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 Pita back to, to the floor. Okay. Mom Pita, may we hear from you now? I, I, I don't know on what happened. I, I think I got disconnected, but I don't know which part uh, I was disconnected. <laughs> oh, can you remember? Can Ma'am, you can just start from the beginning. I think that would be uh, the best thing to do. Uh, okay. Yes, so yes. Uh, <laughs> I'm keeping my fingers crossed that my uh, internet won't uh, act, act up. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, can, can you see my uh, screen now? Yes, ma'am. We Is can see your screen, but uh, perhaps you can uh, click on the uh, uh, slide. Yeah, uh, yeah. We'll, I will do that. Yes. Okay, so like what I've said, um, as I was reading the paper, there were um, <laughs> questions uh, that emerged. And uh, I've divided these questions into two, one on the supply side, another on the demand side. Um, th these questions uh, are as follows. Uh, is there sufficient production capacity to manufacture EV, considering that um, our our um, manufacturing costs are relative, really relatively high right now. Do we have the necessary raw materials, parts and components? And um, also given the fact that uh, we have a very limited supplier network, do we have the required skills to build uh, the EV industry? What is our position in the global uh, value chain? Where are our strengths? What are the areas where we have a comparative advantage in? Are we going to specialize in parts or in EV manufacturing, or do we um, specialize in both? Where are the gaps in the supply and value chain, and how can we upgrade and improve our GVC position? On the demand side, what are the factors that determine the demand for EV? Um, for instance, uh, is it uh, power costs, charging stations, safety concerns, battery costs, including EV price? Uh, what would hasten the shift from ICE to EV? And where will the potential demand come from, from passenger cars, buses, chipneys, e-trikes, or e-bikes? And hence, it's very important uh, really for us to come up with a uh, an estimation of uh, demand helping us understand what drives, uh, what are the factors, what, what are the determinants of demand um, in the country. And this is um, really crucial in terms of uh, helping us craft effective policies and programs in order to promote EV, uh, EV development and EV industry in the country. Along, along with this is um, what are the justifications for providing subsidies and if ever we do at what levels and so uh, the elasticities that we could get from the demand uh, estimation would really be crucial. Um, the other items, um, what are the market failures and is there a role for industrial policy? I think we need to uh, really address uh, all of these issues. And coming now to the methodology, uh, of course we use SWOT a lot. Um, and it's the main framework of the paper, actually. But in the context of what we want to achieve, in, in, in terms of the problems that we want to solve, um, is this really the best framework to apply? Um, and um, after, actually, after doing, uh, carrying out a SWOT, uh, what we do is to synthesize all the four factors and come up with a strategic plan. And the strategy is a huge, determining or formulating the strategy is a huge task. And it actually involves um, 
a lot of consultations with industry, with government, with the workers, with the academe to help us define what the vision is going to be, what are the goals, as well as identifying uh, the priority initiatives to help us realize our objectives. And um, as already discussed, EV is a very complex issue and hence we need more in-depth analysis in order to help us make the right decisions, the correct decisions. Strategies that uh, we're going to formulate must be based on reliable and robust analysis. And the SWOT, um, it does not uh, provide uh, the prioritization of the results. Um, as well as uh, providing solutions or offering alternative decisions. So at best, the SWOT is uh, there to uh, guide us in our strategy formulation, but it is not uh, prescriptive and it has to be su supplemented really by comprehensive analysis, by uh, more comprehensive research, which is actually the foundation of um, good uh, uh, policy formulation. We need more in-depth analysis of the state of the industry, the environment in which firms uh, operate, taking into account as well the changing trends in consumption in technology, uh, data on production, industry linkages, workers, cost competitiveness, productivity. We need to estimate all of this. Uh, GVC analysis, um, exports, imports, uh, uh, trade performance, the tariffs, uh, non-tariff measures, our FTAs, can we top this uh, as we promote our exports, uh, as we try to uh, uh, build our scale economies, uh, where are, again, um, measures of comparative advantage, investments, R&D, innovation, and coming up with um, a really a comprehensive analysis of our EV ecosystem. Um, and uh, at the same time, this would help us in terms of identifying where the gaps are. Is it on the standards, the testing, regulatory framework, R&D, human resource development, investment, and all the other uh, players, including the EV uh, infrastructure that is necessary in order for us to um, successfully carry out our strategies. So um, the, the next slides, I would just be sharing some highlights uh, pertaining to uh, the industry. We start uh, actually by looking at uh, the Philippine auto industry. And as we know, there are 369 firms currently engaged in assembly and parts manufacturing. They contribute uh, only 0.3%, 0.30% of, uh, um, the, the, of our GDP. There are 80,500 uh, workers and 1.18 billion US dollars in terms of uh, value added to the economy. In terms of distribution, uh, mostly they are in the parts uh, uh, manufacturing, 45% uh, in uh, parts and accessories for motor vehicles and engines, 7% in electric ignition, and 27% uh, in the manufacture of bodies for uh, motor vehicles. 20% are in um, the manufacture of uh, vehicles. In terms of uh, growth, um, well, prior to the pandemic, as you can see on the slide, uh, the Philippine auto market was actually at the midst of uh, a rapid acceleration. Um, sales and growth, uh, we hit 23%, uh, 29% starting in 2014, so double digit up to 2017. But uh, uh, because of the pandemic, as you can see, uh, big, uh, uh, I mean, big contractions uh, were experienced. So um, in, in terms of trade, um, trade performance, the country is, uh, uh, has been uh, dependent on uh, imports, particularly in the past uh, 13 years. 49% uh, 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 of our um, total market, this is accounted for by imported vehicles. And this share, that, that was in 2008, and this went up to 70% share in 2020. Um, and uh, if we look at uh, this chart, which compares the share of imported vehicles to market sales in uh, among the uh, five ASEAN countries, the, this top topmost line, this is the Philippines, 78% uh, uh, in, um, this is in, uh, which year is this one? But um, I think this is 2018. This is 2019, 74, and 70% 70 in 2020. And this uh, next one, this is Vietnam, and then we have Malaysia, 
Um, Indonesia and uh, Thailand, as you can see, they have negative figures indicating that they are uh, net exporters. And in terms of our participation in uh, the global value chain, the Philippines is active in parts and components, particularly in electric, in wiring, as well as in the chassis system and electrical and electronics uh, system. Um, looking now at uh, our trade performance, like what I've said, we are uh, really a net importer. And so when we look at our uh, trade, uh, trade deficit, it's really, uh, really huge, rising, except uh, uh, up to 7.5, 7 uh, in uh, 20, 7.5 billion US dollars. This, this is uh, the, the amount, the value of our deficit in 2018. Same as in uh, 2017, 7.4 in 2019. Of course, 2020 was an abnormal, abnormal year. So in terms of uh, the export performance, it's basically coming from our parts uh, manufacturing, which uh, as you can see in particular, good uh, uh, automotive electronics performed uh, relatively well, um, in, uh, growing at a rate of 10.9%, even at the height of the pandemic. Um, this is our uh, roadmap and uh, uh, it's divided into three phases. Um, CARS program uh, it has been implemented since 2018 and uh, of course the goal is uh, to be able to integrate the, the country's auto industry in the ASEAN production and the ASEAN uh, regional uh, production network. Um, so as we uh, transition to electric vehicles, our strategy really is uh, focusing on these uh, five areas. Uh, establishing the regulations and the standards, um, ensuring that we have fiscal and non-fiscal uh, support to be provided to both consumers and manufacturers. Human resource development is uh, very important along with R&D and uh, information education and communication. Um, this is the industry. Uh, I won't uh, enumerate anymore, but uh, I believe our uh, production capacity is around 150,000 uh, units. And um, in terms of uh, annual registration, well, uh, the total is 12,964 EVs uh, covering the years from 2010 uh, 2020. Okay, and mostly these are e trikes and uh, e motorcycles. Um, our industry priority, industry priorities in terms of electric uh, vehicle are as follows. Number one would be electric vehicle assembly, automotive electronics parts and, uh, and uh, components uh, with a particular focus on advanced high precision sensors, AI enabled parts, um, along with uh, electric motor powertrains and metal forging. Uh, we are also focusing on uh, developing EV battery charging, energy storage systems and recycling, along with uh, engineering service uh, outsourcing. Um, in the domestic market, these are our uh, internal projections. We're looking at 6.6 .6 million EVs uh, by 2030, um, half of which 3.3 million um, uh, would be manufactured locally by 2030. And these are the yellow colored um, bars, shaded portions of the bars that uh, you can see. Okay. And mostly these are PUVs, 72,000, buses, 12,000, trucks, 70,000, 70,000 uh, other PUVs, 2.7 million two wheelers, and 300,000 uh, three wheelers. Um, I would also want to share uh, the results of a study that uh, we uh, requested US, the US Aid Respond uh, uh, team to uh, carry out. This was done by uh, Dr. Maharava Go. Um, it was uh, completed last year. As you can see, this is uh, a cost benefit analysis of uh, Egyptian ownership. So we tried to compare uh, Egyptian ownership versus uh, a diesel, uh, diesel uh, powered uh, jeepney. And um, in all four scenarios, we have the baseline here, a scenario B where in you, 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 uh, we, we, we see, we will um, simulate the impact of falling battery prices 
cleaner, uh, another scenario would be uh, transition to cleaner energy. And the last is uh, RE powered charging stations. And in all scenarios, you can see that uh, the socioeconomic net benefits of, e of uh, uh, Egypt new are, these are all uh, positive and with the benefit cost ratio being greater than one. So with this uh, results these are, as you can see, very encouraging. We can make use of uh, this results in terms of uh, support, the granting of uh, subsidies to uh, Egypt uh, uh, to, for the development of e Egypt industry in the country. And we're also, uh, like what I've said, uh, the focus on uh, automotive electronics, given that we're already quite strong in this uh, segment, there are um, many areas uh, we could um, further upgrade our activities. For instance, uh, here are some companies that are already engaged, uh, particularly Denso, which is manufacturing smart keys, sonar sensors, compressors, aircon and meter cluster. We have uh, IMI, who is uh, part of uh, the GVC of uh, a huge uh, car maker, global car maker based in Europe, um, Ionix, EMS, as well as uh, Temic. And given our strength uh, as well um, in, uh, let me move on to the next. Ah, uh, no, given our, uh, our strength uh, in the IT industry, this is another area which, uh, uh, we could promote in terms of uh, linking it with uh, the development of the EV industry. And uh, lithium ion uh, batteries, uh, like what we've said, we, we are positioning the, the Philippines as a global manufacturing hub for lithium ion uh, batteries, utilizing our nickel and cobalt uh, as cathode materials. Uh, and these are uh, abundant in, in, in the Philippines. And we have here, uh, uh, some of the companies that are already um, manufacturing battery and battery parts, uh, um, they're all located in uh, economic uh, zones. And um, in, in this uh, slide, just to share, uh, we are number six in uh, nickel reserves, as you can see. Uh, we, uh, we have a share of 5% of the global total. And in terms of nickel production, the Philippines is uh, number two. Uh, first is Indonesia and Philippines with uh, 323,000 metric tons of nickel. Okay, uh, so I'm about to finish. Uh, um, the Philippines uh, uh, taking into account the, our our FTAs, so we could uh, we could uh, actually market uh, this battery and battery parts to our FTA partners such as Japan, Australia, New Zealand. China and uh, Europe, and uh, you can you can see in this chart the uh, different products along with uh, the uh, tariff rates. And as you can see in here, mostly these are already zero, and uh, hence uh, this would serve as very good markets for uh, these products that we are developing. And uh, the last one, uh, I, I think I also mentioned this earlier with respect to our strength in the IT industry, and um, we could also. Uh, further promote this in uh, the automotive uh, industry. Um, and taking all that into account, I, well, we've also compiled uh, a list of additional uh, points that we can include among our strengths, weaknesses, the threats, as well as uh, the opportunities. M maybe I'll just mention uh, the threat is that um, while uh, we've seen a growing market demand, but then we won't be able to take advantage of this since uh, we don't have an industry and if we if uh, that's the case then we just need we just uh, would have to rely continuously on uh, imports so uh, again uh, we're, that's an opportunity we're going to miss if we're not uh, going to uh, develop our own industry and uh, final final word um, um, I'm, I'm hoping that uh, future research in peds would uh, also dwell uh, particularly uh, given uh, the rapidly changing mobility landscape, and I'm hoping that uh, for the future auto uh, auto industry uh, uh, research, uh, we we take into account that the future car is going to be autonomous. It's electric, connected, and shared, and hence the need to focus on the following areas: 
um, and the role that Philippines could play uh, in uh, building autonomous vehicles and smart cities, e-commerce and the future of the delivery vehicles, um, online mobility platforms or ride hailing applications, as well as the shift from privately owned vehicles to safer, smarter, technology enabled and more convenient public transportation given uh, the rising traffic uh, congestion, particularly in the, in the urban areas and the growing popularity of micro mobility such as e-scooters and e-bikes for intrazonal or intracity uh, mobility. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to stop there. Thank you very much for your attention. And thank you very much, uh, Yusek Aldaba. Um, okay, so at this point, we will now proceed to uh, our open forum. Um, but before that, uh, I'd, I'd like to tell you that we won't have a poll today, but just like last week, we will pick three names from our WebEx participants and each of them will receive a PIDS notebook. And I will announce the names of the winners uh, before we close the webinar. Okay. We have, uh, we received lots of uh, very interesting questions. Most of them, our um, discussions have uh, emphasized the interrelated uh, nature of the issues surrounding the uh, EV industry. And so are the questions that we uh, um, received from our uh, participants. So let me start um, with uh, the questions related to, um, you know, environmental issues, um, the, the shift to um, the use of EVs will help us become uh, new, uh, new, um, carbon neutral in the in the long run. But uh, right now, the, the thing is, we still generate electricity using uh, coal-fired power plants. No, this was emphasized by Mr. Rolando Ram, uh, Ramon Diaz, and by doing so, it's it sort of defeats the objectives of the objective of environmental protection which is uh, part of the objective of uh, you know shifting to to um, electric vehicles and this was uh, the same point was uh, seconded by uh, Alisa Pastrana so um how are we going to properly promote EVs uh, with one of its significant objectives being related to environmental protection if the Philippines is still generating most of its electricity using coal-fired uh, coal power plants. O although there has been a moratorium on new coal power plants, well, still we are uh, heavily dependent on coal as uh, uh, for generating power. Perhaps we can ask um, our discussants on this and also um, before I go to Mao. Um, Sir Edmund, any thoughts? Yes. Okay. Uh, with regards to that issue, actually, there is, uh, we made a study that we have submitted to the Department of Trade and Industry under uh, 2018 uh, studies with uh, Mitsubishi and uh, uh, DTI that all, in terms of importation of barrels of fuels uh, that we produce, uh, that we imported from other countries, our uh, majority are being uh, into the auto sector. And with that kind of aspect that we're using uh, electric vehicles, we will have some cost savings on it. Now, in terms of uh, the, the coal uh, usage, there are, a lot, there are already some uh, infrastructures on um, uh, infrastructures of uh, secondary power supplies. Uh, in terms of solar panels, in, so, in terms of uh, other renewable energies that uh, that may source out, not only relying on the coal-powered plants that uh, we are getting at. So there, there, there are a lot of uh, options, not only on the coal-powered uh, plants that we we uh, rely on. So those are the items that uh, we would like to. Uh, uh, inform you so that uh, uh, we, we, we keep on pushing on the promotion of the electric vehicles. Uh, we are looking at how can we have some cost savings mm -hmm. in terms of an, a bigger aspect, not only on, on, on the, the supply side of uh, the coal power plants. That we, and and uh, I think Yusek Pita can give more emphasis on, on this. 
Thank you, Sir Edmund. Yusuf Tita, any thoughts on how we can, uh, you know, push? Yeah, um, uh, well, okay. um, I, like what I've uh, uh, already mentioned uh, earlier, even given the current mix, there are already uh, um, cost savings that uh, we could uh, incur, uh, energy, sir, energy savings along with avoided uh, carbon costs, mm -hmm. um, health damage costs that could uh, arise. Um, of course, it's uh, really quite challenging. We cannot uh, shift uh, our power, our energy mix. Uh, we cannot uh, shift uh, fully to our mm -hmm. overnight. We, it, it could not be done. Um, I, I, I think we have uh, representatives from DOE. Uh, maybe they could uh, also uh, chime in in terms of uh, the plans of DOE, um, mm -hmm. the, the plans with respect to uh, uh, the changes in the mix and uh, what we uh, foresee is going to uh, be the uh, share of uh, renewables in, in, in the very near future. Um, but uh, again, um, even with the current mix that we have, there are already benefits that uh, we could get. Um, but of course, like what I've said, um, it would be uh, the most ideal would be even for the charging stations to be powered by uh, renewables. Renewables, that's, yes. yes, that's that's uh, that, that's uh, that's our uh, ultimate goal. But for mm -hmm. now, given uh, given the country's stage of development, we it's really uh, going to uh, take uh, some time before we we will be able to uh, completely shift to RE. But um, as we speak, there are already a lot of companies, a lot of industries, particularly those that are uh, linked with uh, global value chains, with mm -hmm. uh, global, um, with multinationals who are requiring our our uh, manufacturers here in the country. Even for, I'm not talking about manufacturing only. Even for even for the services uh, oriented. Uh, uh, companies, they are also being required to uh, make use of uh, RE mm -hmm. in, in their, in their uh, energy energy use. They are being asked to shift, and hence uh, we're also having a lot of. That's why I I I, I am aware that uh, DOE uh, has uh, a lot of plans as well, considering this uh, really this uh, all these um, trends happening outside and the pressure, the external pressure, really for us to already shift to RE. But again, mm -hmm. we cannot do it overnight, and uh, there is a plan that uh, we are following. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Yusek Aldabai and, uh, uh, and Mr. Edwin Araga. We have a comment here from uh, DOE Director Patrick Aquino, and he said DOE is working on a program to power electric vehicles with, uh, with RE with renewable energy. Perhaps we can uh, we can. Um, Make um, you know the microphone of of of, of um, Director Aquino uh, Gwen, so that uh, perhaps he can he can say more about uh, his comment on on this program of powering EV with RE, and then we I, I'll call him uh, later. Okay, uh, okay. He said data on all displacement can be provided in the Philippine Energy Plan. Okay. So if it's possible, uh, when perhaps we can we can hear from from uh, uh, Director Aquino by uh... okay he's already a panelist according to Gwen okay Director Aquino would you like to expound on your comments sir yeah so sorry I I can't turn on my video I'm still on the the road no but... problem sir <laughs> yeah the, the... okay go ahead sir. Yeah, as, as we've been doing the rounds, uh, that's right. Uh, the presentation indicated that the major source for importation in terms of energy is oil. That's why it's part of the track uh, that in the Philippine Energy Youth Plan that uh, we will electrify or shift the uh, transport sector. Road transport accounts for 88, uh, sorry, 88 percent of that uh, importation bill. Eh. Uh, so we can provide updated figures as needed. Uh, and part of what we're doing, there are studies that uh, is on board with our uh, university partners uh, to see the extent of how we can power electric vehicles uh, through 
renewable energy. Uh, in fact, uh, we have an ongoing study uh, with the uh, UP Diliman uh, that is uh, looking at the potential of uh, fast charging uh, using solar. If we can go 100% using fast charging, how, how stable that is, uh, or it will just augment. Uh, the results of that study is uh, upcoming uh, later this year, and uh, we will be sharing that to the public. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. Um, if you could just stay with us for uh, a bit more, because there may be some questions here that, uh, you know, may, may require the comment of uh, uh, the Department of Energy. Thank you, sir. I hope you are not driving. Okay, let us go to another uh, to other questions. Still on power, but this time on uh, power. Okay, power costs, and this was mentioned actually by Mao in his uh, in her uh, SWOT analysis. Um, given the um, and on also uh, this was also mentioned by Mr. Araga. Uh, we are the second highest uh, in in Asia in terms of power costs. And um, a question here from uh, Rolando Ramon Diaz. How would the government promote competitively priced electricity source for EV when the country has the second most expensive electricity rate after Japan? I'm not sure if you would like to answer this. Um, Mr. Araga, any... Would you okay. like to... <laughs> uh, as we have uh, studied on, 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 uh, on the consumption of each and every unit that we uh, we use uh, still more affordable or we have more savings. I for one, I'm using an electric, no. And in terms of uh, and in uh, using an electric car over an IC, I save a lot of uh, money uh, in using an EVs. Mm -hmm. That is, you you have to make a full proof that. Uh, in using one, uh, you would see that uh, how effectiveness and how it would be uh, viable to to make use of electric vehicle as a form of commute. No, now in, in terms of uh, the value chain of the, uh, that's why the Department of Energy is looking for ways of uh, adding more programs, uh, is establishing the approved. Uh, Law on renewable energies, and mm. so as we could have some other options, options. wherein we can uh, uh, charge our units, and uh, establishing such options would be helpful enough uh, in in adding into the infrastructure of the EVs in particular. So that's one thing that I can comment on. Thank you, uh, Mr. Araga. Uh we just uh, received a comment here from uh, Dr. Uh, David Yap of the of uh, the University of the Philippines, uh, and I, I think this is for you, Mao, because um, he was asking if uh, you know because inadequate power supply is also one of the issues in in the country. However, um, this was not in in, in your in uh, the list of the threats in your uh, in your presentation. Uh, would you would you respond? Would you like to respond to this, uh, Mao? So, Michelle, the comment is okay about the, about the uh, inadequate, um, inadequate power supply, which uh, power supply. Mm -hmm, we should have been um, considered as I one of the threats. Uh oh, um, I wasn't able to um, study this in depth. Um, very, as you can see, a very it's quite uh, general overview of the uh, general view of the industry. But um, I was uh, from the study by um, Mitsubishi. Mm -hmm. um, it it's quite technical, no, the analysis. But uh, what I got from it is that um, the EVs won't uh, EV adoption would not uh, be a but a major threat to the power grid. That's oh, okay. um, what they found out. Although, of course, uh, there could be more, you know, study on that. But mm -hmm. uh, based on that um, analysis, um, mm -hmm. it's not a uh, very uh, major threat. Say, if we, we have uh, the EV adoption. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Okay. Sheila. Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> if I, yeah. If I may Please also chime in. Um, okay, well. <laughs> 
that's the reason why uh, we're really uh, uh, coming up with, uh, we, we try to work with uh, um, the various researchers to help us in terms of uh, understanding uh, the demand. Um, we need to come up really with a, a good estimate, uh, like if uh, um, EVs would be manufactured here, how many, how many cars, how many people would be uh, uh, purchasing these EVs. We need to know that number because uh, that has to be inputted to uh, the Department of Energy in order for them to determine as well whether uh, with, with this so many EVs uh, being available in the market, will we be able to uh, provide uh, all the necessary power, the necessary electricity. And apparently, uh, given the initial estimates that we have, um, DOE said that we have uh, sufficient uh, supply. We were also oh. very active in terms of uh, mm -hmm. the work that um, um, Dr. Mani Biona, together with the other uh, researchers from uh, four other universities, carried out. So we were we were very active uh, in that uh, engagement, and uh, we uh, are all fully fully aware of uh, the issues that uh, were discussed. And um, that's, uh, I think, my first point. The other point I uh, would also want to um, say something on the other question that uh, was raised uh, earlier, considering the comparison, whether, um, w whether it is really going to be uh, more efficient to uh, shift uh, to an EV. Well, if th th we also have um, numbers here. Uh, trying to compare the savings that you would be getting. There would be fuel savings, uh, operations and maintenance cost savings, um, uh, as well as charging station costs. Of course, we, we need to factor all this in. Um, and uh, over a 10 year period, it's still positive. Of course, what's go going to be very difficult would be the initial outlay, the price mm -hmm. of the EV, which right now is still um, higher than the traditional. But if you're going to compare uh, the life uh, of uh, the vehicle, including your usage, um, and uh, being able to prevent all those costs that uh, I mentioned earlier, then you would still um, be on uh, on the, uh, you, you would still incur net gain as compared to uh, uh, maintaining a traditional uh, vehicle. Apart from those, those are from the point of view of uh, of a person or from a private from a private uh, consumer, but in terms again taking into account all the other socioeconomic benefits that uh, we could gain uh, by uh, by shifting to EV, like what I've said earlier, it's still net a net benefit. So what government is doing is uh, we're trying to look because get the the main issue now is the high price uh, of. Um, of an EV, um, and so we're starting by uh, looking at the public transportation system. Uh, we what we are suggesting is to provide a subsidy to our jeepney drivers in acquiring uh, or in um, changing or uh, shifting from I from uh, diesel to uh, an uh, e jeepney. Mm -hmm. You said you 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 mentioned that um, the high cost of uh, the higher cost of EVs compared to the traditional uh, vehicles but is this because uh, of the uh, the fewer number of EV manufacturers in the country it's uh, so, it's because of the oh sorry yes <laughs> sorry, yes please sorry. go ahead yeah yeah no it's the battery actually it's the battery, the battery cost it's the battery, it's the battery cost, cost that uh, um, okay. <laughs> that okay, may okay. that makes, makes the price of the an EV ah, really okay. expensive okay. Oh, um, but okay. uh, like what we've also uh, pointed out earlier we have uh, we have the resources we have nickel uh, for example which uh, could uh, a vital, which is a vital component of uh, a battery and hence we're trying I to see. leverage on okay. on these resources for us to attract uh, EV manufacturers to come in, in into the country because we have the basic resource. Basic resource. If we can move mm -hmm. towards battery, if we can manufacture the battery here, can you just mm -hmm. imagine? That's mm -hmm. the most expensive uh, component of an oh, EV. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> and so we, we, we want to have that. Mm -mm. Mr. Edmund, Ahanta, you were, yeah. please, please do. Please, uh, um. Uh, the, the main component really is the upfront cost of the EV. No? Mm -hmm. And as mentioned, that the battery is very the, the one that has uh, 
a, a, a bigger chunk of the pie of in terms of costing of the EVs. And if you are one of the operators, you have to have some spare uh, batteries too that you have to back up with on, on your operation so that you have continuity on the uh, on, on the operation if you can afford. Now, okay. in terms mm -hmm. of uh, in terms of uh, how it is being built, it is uh, Egypt's and E-Trex are very simple, not as complicated on producing electric cars, no. And we have a very simplified form of this uh, design that uh, can be really be uh, easy easy to produce. However, the economies of scale is the problem. In, uh, there's, will, will there be enough demands for, for, for us to produce this? Uh, the support of the government in terms of PUB modernization on subsidies is also equal to the one that they uh, offer to the ICEs. However, if you are the user and you are new to in using the EVs, you have some second thoughts of buying an EV. So we have to come up on educating them how it is more beneficially uh, in using the electric vehicles. So mm -mm. what would be more uh, beneficial on, on using the EVs? Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of uh, categories itself, actually, as I've seen on the, on the questionnaires, the administrative, administrative order LTO is uh, 2021-039 mm -hmm. on the circulation of the the categories of the guidelines and the, the usage of the EVs. Mm -hmm. That's it. So you, that's, you, that's, the EV, you have to charge uh, the EV, you have to charge the battery every day because I think that's one of the questions that I saw in the chat box. And, and well, uh, an EV, uh, if you are, uh, an EV uh, if owner uh, has to get uh, used to that now or in charge. Well, ma'am, it's like this. Uh, uh, as mentioned again, uh, it is an upfront cost. Uh, mm -hmm. It depends on where you travel. Now, okay. if you consume more than 100 kilometers a day, then if the, 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 the capacity of your, your vehicle is only at 100, then you have to charge it after mm. one use. But mm -hmm. if not, if your daily routine is only at 5 to 10 kilometers, then you can make use of it in, 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 in a week or two. Mm -hmm. So that's how things that they have to understand that in, in using EVs, you have to educate yourself from where are you going so that the range anxiety would be addressed. You have mm -hmm. to to plan it over whether where you're coming from, whether you're going for, or is there a, a, a nearby charging station at place on, on the next uh, 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 area that you're going to? So th those are the things that we have to consider. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Uh, Araga, because you've already uh, addressed uh, the questions of Jason Tully of Top Gear Philippines and Mr. Uh, Rolando Ramon Diaz about on um, customer concerns over EV, particularly uh, uh, with respect to the to the bat to the battery. Okay, as well as uh, um, okay. Let me go to this question from Leslie Joy Diaz. Uh, in terms of utilization of locally available material resources such as nickel, will the Will there be support in developing the downstream manufacturing of this different raw materials to produce the parts and supplies needed for the electric vehicles? Aside from nickel, what other raw materials could be further developed into the different parts or supplies for EV? Uh, you said, Tita, uh, may, I, uh, may we hear from you? <laughs> I was on mute. Uh, yes, there would be uh, incentives to be provided to all the um, industry players. Uh, uh, we're, we're looking actually at the entire uh, supply and value chain. And uh, if uh, there are no uh, sufficient uh, manufacturers or players in the market, again, that's another uh, gap in the supply chain. And uh, if, if, if we, we have a new law, actually. It's... Uh, the uh, create um, and it's uh, offering really a menu of uh, incentives uh, covering uh, the electric. Uh, well, it, it the the strategic investment priority plan has not yet been issued, but uh, definitely based on the uh, guidelines 
in the um, create uh, law. Um, I'm, I'm positive that uh, EV along with uh, the parts, components, and other materials uh, uh, that would go with it um, will uh, be part of uh, the priority areas to be incentivized. Thank you, Asik Tita. Uh, we have a question here from, uh, okay. Um, what is the role of the traditional vehicle manufacturers such as Toyota, Ford in the EV, in the um, electric vehicle industry, uh, in the future of the EV? At the same time, what is the role of the smaller manufacturers? Will these two groups of manufacturers be catering to different markets, uh, Asik Tita? Yes, um, well, uh, Toyota, both, uh, both uh, as we know, they already have uh, their footprints here, here in uh, the country, and uh, they're the two uh, really huge uh, domestic manufacturers. Um, and uh, Toyota already has its own, well, it's not, uh, it's a hybrid. Uh, Toyota has its uh, hybrid, but Mitsubishi has uh, a model uh, which utilizes a full battery as well as a plug-in uh, hybrid. And um, given the right environment, given the given the um, a robust ecosystem which we we are trying to create uh, with all the elements that I uh, earlier uh, indicated in the, the presentation, um, th this uh, um, two manufacturers would uh, be ready to invest as well here here in the country. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Yusek Peter. We have a question here from um, a Facebook viewer. Uh, Dr. Francis came up the ideas. What was the experience of cities that have adopted EVs in their locality and how can we build on uh, their experience? I'm not sure if uh, we have... Uh, uh, Mr. Araga, would you have some, uh, some, something to share on, on this experience of um, okay. how else she used the... Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. okay, uh, the, the, the key there is sustainability. Uh, mm -hmm. Some of the local government units were able to uh, to get uh, the the pie of the share of the three thousand units of e trikes, no, uh, that came from uh, ADB and DOE. Now the question uh, is uh, certain on on how they can sustain it uh, more than five years of of its warranty, and how can they guarantee that this unit would uh, would continue to be used. Uh, for social, uh, for, for public transportation, or for other things that the local government uh, units are, are project into this. Now, there are other local government units. The, 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 the supply side is another uh, factor wherein uh, the commitment of the suppliers on um, addressing concerns on the PMS uh, the, the maintenance and it's uh, the, the supply side of the parts that is needed to replace during the course of time it is being operated. Those are the items that uh, has to be uh, addressed. No, uh, but fortunately, most of the local government units have uh, the capabilities to sustain, but only on 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 not on a long term but on a short term because the the problem is on the changing of uh changing of the leaders that would in the inherit on on the next election who would be ha who would handle the the units that are being granted to them no and if that project or if that program would be included as well on their continuity on uh, uh using that this uh unit i for one i experienced it as manufacturer and as deployed uh, my units to a certain area, the discontinue of the units were were being um, questioned, or some has to do with the continuity because this a change of leadership. Uh -huh. That's another problem, no? Uh, so how can we be able to sustain it if uh, the 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 good project is uh, being questioned by the next uh, generation leader, or? Mm -hmm the one who would head it no so that's another second is uh we have to address it not only on the local government unit but on a national aspect uh wherein through the efforts of the like doe who, who has to monitor this uh project 
for uh, for a period of five years so that uh, they could see that the, the sustainability of the project and the program would continue uh, is very essential. They they have to have such a setup of uh, caretaker of the unit, not only just deploying it, some sort of ownership, no, uh, to give emphasis on value on the unit. That's very important. Thank you, Mr. Araga. I, I have a question which is related to the pandemic because what we have heard uh, from the presentation uh, uh, refer uh, mostly to, uh, you know, pre-pandemic uh, data. So how has the pandemic affected the EV industry? And uh, do you see any silver lining? <laughs> do you see any silver Actually, lining? Since Ms. Sheila, since most of the units that we are deploying is on public transport, we were hardly hit. Uh, but the, 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 the good thing that what, what we had during the pandemic situation that it was being used for the health workers to transport it to, to, to their hospitals and to their homes, no? Uh, as an alternative project of the local government units. That's one effective thing that they, they make in use of However, in terms of fleet operations, uh, we were we were affected, and that's one thing that we are lacking right now: uh, the two wheels or the e-bikes. If it is regulated and being used on logistics, this would be a big plus. Right now, there are a lot of logistics companies on in the service, wherein they have to look into this uh, feature that. Uh, Shifting, shifting it to electric vehicles is the key for them to have a continuous operation and sustain it. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Araga. Uh, we have a question here from um, from an FD uh, viewer by the name of Rain Rain Buenaventura. So uh, we have the PUV modernization program, no, and then. There is this pass the passage the passage of the law for e vehicle. So, what do you think would be the effect uh, on our to our traditional motorized vehicles? Because this is really a challenge on the part of the operators and and drivers. Um, would you like to answer uh, this first, this uh, Mr. Be... N? Yes, you can answer it, and then okay. we will go to uh, uh, okay. the rest of the speakers, sir. Okay. Uh, the PUB modernization program, I would just like to make, uh, give one example. Down in the south, there is one operator who avail of this program, and he is one of our me members uh, in EVAP, the Deco Transport. No? Mm -hmm. They made use of more than uh, 200 or 300 e Egyptians in General Santos City. And uh, out of the nine, 900 units that they deployed for the uh, for fleet operations, 300 of which or 500 of which are on EVs and the rest are on ICEs. So there are areas of uh, concern that they have that is viable for EVs and there are areas of concern that they, they may need the ICE. So hindi pwede kagad uh, sudden change of shifting into EVs. First in particular is uh, on the charging infrastructure. Uh, the last mile uh, uh, approach of uh, these uh, operators has to be considered on, on how, how many uh, range do, do, do they have to operate with and uh, gaano kalaki yung scope ng area na tina travel nila. So that's another. Second is um, uh, in terms of concerning on uh, on inclination, if there are some mountainous areas that are concerned of mabilis din yung ubus ng baterya, so hindi naman po pwedeng EVs lang ang gagamitin dito, so malulugi din sila. So those are, has to be considered on, on a factor in on the inclination of the area, whether it would be on a, on a higher area or not, no? On flat talagang uh, ideal yung uh, Egypts, no? So, mm -mm. those one thing that I want to cite some example with. Mm -mm -mm. Mr. Arada, have you seen any resistance from petroleum companies when it comes to EV adoption? May nakita ba kayong ganun? That's okay. a question, a Actually, question from uh, Jason Tulio. Mm -mm. 
Actually, ma'am, there, this may may one un, one member na kami, Uni Oil, who mm, pioneered okay. on establishing an uh, a DC charger uh, in Makati and in Quezon City, and soon in, it would be uh, in Subic. I heard of a uh, advanced input na lang to kung yari na lang. <laughs> but anyway, uh, looking at the uh, bright aspect that they also considered uh, the oil companies are considering uh, charging station for uh, at least not only mm -hmm. here but in other countries as well. In fact, in Singapore, uh, Shell is very aggressive on uh, establishing uh, charging stations. To their uh, to their gasoline uh, area, uh, gasoline station areas, in cooperation with our with my counterpart in uh, uh, in Singapore, the president of uh, Singapore uh, Electric Vehicle Association of Singapore, Green Lots, headed by Terence. Uh, so there there are indications that talaga the auto industry are really have no choice but to accept that the fact that. Uh, auto is going into electric as well, no? Auto industry is, uh, the, the direction is going towards on uh, electric vehicle. Okay. Thank you for that, yeah. Mr. Um, you said, I, I yeah. said in your head. Please, uh, go ahead. <laughs> no, uh, I, I was just about to say that uh, since you were asking a while ago um, what the impact of the pandemic uh, has yes, been yes. in terms uh -huh, of... Uh -huh. uh, the uh, the direction towards uh, EV, I, I think all the more uh, with the pandemic, um, the emphasis has really uh, uh, focused in terms of uh, environment, the need for us to protect the environment, the need for us to um, come up with uh, more innovation, use new technologies to manufacture uh, more environment uh, friendly goods. Um, so uh, nothing nothing has actually changed in terms of the future direction and in mm -hmm. fact i would say it has even uh, further deepened uh, the concern with respect to uh, shifting from um, fossil fuels towards uh, the renewables as i was also mentioning earlier it's not only in the automotive industry but as well as in other industries that just mm -hmm. manufacturing but even in other sectors like uh, services in the hyperscalers data centers cloud uh, services providers um, big uh, multinational uh, companies, the, the big tech companies, Amazon, Microsoft, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so on. <laughs> they are all requiring uh, for them to invest here in the country. They they are requiring that the energy that we use uh, for us to um, be able to shift to RE already, and they are monitoring that. So that's already part of all the discussions that we're having with uh, investors, and hence really uh, the need for us to. Um, be prepared uh, to how can we accelerate all these uh, RE plans, energy plans, mm -hmm. such that uh, we, we will be able to protect not only the environment, but at the same time, take advantage of uh, the market opportunities arising from this uh, uh, changing trends. And uh, mm -hmm. let me also note, Sheila, if I may just uh, quickly, um, quickly, re <laughs> I saw a comment from Bebeng, Bebeng Clemente, uh, mm -hmm. that because we have the nickel resources means that uh, it is easily, uh, it could easily Useful. be focused. That's, yeah, yeah, that's, that's yeah, uh, and I think that's true. Um, that's very true, of course. And that's the reason why uh, we are also working together with researchers mm -hmm. uh, to come up with a feasibility study uh, with respect to uh, the use of and the processing of uh, the nickel resources that we have here in the country. We need to actually come up really with a very good business proposition, with a very good business model to be presented to investors for them to be attracted to uh, mm -hmm. okay. invest here, here in the country. So that's. Uh, part of uh, the, the really the huge work that uh, we are carrying out. And we're uh, also uh, currently uh, in discussion with uh, a Korean institute for us to partner um, in terms of uh, assessing uh, the feasibility of manufacturing um, batteries here in the country, mm -hmm. given that we have nickel resources. Uh -huh. And cobalt, by the way, we also have cobalt. You said uh, in in your uh, presentation, I think it was your your uh, last slide. You mentioned a number of uh, future research directions, no? Uh, perhaps the PIDS may want to consider because I wanted to ask uh, Mao if I if she is thinking of any fo um, a follow up study to to this, Mao. <laughs> 
it's it's really worth pursuing i think <laughs> uh yeah but <laughs> yes but uh, but, uh, yeah, the, <laughs> but the, yeah, the points uh, given by uh, the USEC Vita are uh, very important in um, studying the uh, the industry. Um, you know, every you know aspect. It, kung kaya ng every every you know little aspect of it, para we could you know we could determine really the uh, our prospects. What uh, the Philippines can offer, what the Philippines can do, uh, in uh, in terms of manufacturing or um, in terms of usage, in terms of adoption of EV. Um, so, yung study, um, we check natin with the ano, <laughs> with the research <laughs> planning. But um, yeah, it's it's very, and I think it would be very uh, useful to uh, do a more in-depth study on the sector and the industry. Thank you, Mao. Okay, uh, we are down to our last two questions, and we have um, an interesting question here from Leslie Joy Diaz. Uh, let me read it. Proper maintenance of the vehicles can be affected by the culture of the users and the technical capabilities and expertise of the maintenance providers. Have there been studies that have been done? Have there been studies uh, done to assess how the maintenance procedures have to be customized to Filipinos' behavior as well as the environmental conditions that might be unique to our country. If none, do you think this could be worth investigating and analyzing? Mr. Araga, would you like to um, comment on this, sir? Well, um, there's no no change about uh, on, on how we, we made a PMS on application on the ICE. There's no difference. The only difference is the component parts mm -hmm. are different from the ICE, no? Um, basic lang naman yung lahat ng nandun sa mga EVs natin. And in fact, uh, we're working with the Tesla right now on having uh, 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 having this uh, part of their program on electric vehicles. Uh, we are, hindi naman siya uh, very very similar to the ICEs on what are the important uh, items that they have to check. No, the uh, I I get a nod on your end uh, because the problem is usually the driver itself or the operator itself. Kahit gaano ka ka ano mo na ina apply at tina apply sa kanila in orient mo. Mahira pa rin mapa familiarize sa mga drivers, especially yung talagang hindi masyadong skilled. But with the proper guidance, with the proper uh, setup of how it is being operated, let them understand the value of such unit for them to continuously and sustain the operations. That's how we have to address this concern. So, Kagaya lang yan ng isang unit na pagka nasira ka ng isang araw, ilang oras yung mawawala sa'yo, wala kang, pang, wala kang, wala kang pera na kikitain. Parang ganun na kasimple. So, kailangan i-emphasize mo rin sa kanila. Pag, this one is very important. You have to check this uh, for it to continuously run. Yun yung kailangan natin address Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Araga. Okay. This will be our um, uh, last question, and this is from Prisco the Third Boko. Uh, let me read it. Uh, the main principle of the re renewable energy is that the resource renews itself and is therefore environmentally sustainable. Solar power is actually partially sustainable because although it derives power from sunlight, in the process, uh, but in the process of power storage and distribution, it uses batteries, which as we know it's unsustainable due to its consumption of earth minerals, but such setback in the solar power technology is tolerated because the use of batteries is not yet that extensive. Now, correlating this malady of the solar power storage and distribution to the EV, uh, to the usage of EV batteries on nationwide scale, are we not heading to pollute the environment via battery wastes? What, what do you think of this, um, Mr. Araga? Actually, uh, there are uh, 
recycling companies already uh, that is okay. existing. Not here. Mm-hmm. Not, not here. Not in the Philippines. For the yep. lithium, na? Yep. Uh, not here yet. But mm-hmm. for the lead acid, there are some recyclable companies already. Like Motolite, they have some recycling company, uh, recycling plant uh, to, to, to make use of the second life of the batteries. Uh, actually, uh, even on the lithium ion, there is such, uh, there's a term called second life wherein they make use of it, not, not on the vehicle, but on other uh, usage, like for appliances, mm-hmm. for the solar panel uh, batteries. Those are the things that are being used up already that has uh, stored and factored in about more than 30, 70% of the, of the usage of the battery that can be sustained and re- regenerated and not to be used for uh, e-vehicles, but more so for other items to be used okay so meron pa rin naman ganung uh, setup setup okay uh director aquino of the doe would like to say something director aquino go ahead sir yeah i mean so I, I i would have preferred that it was formally included in the study but there's really an accelerated push for renewable energy mm-hmm. uh, and we are mindful of that. That's why we're very supportive of the work being done by our universities as well as DOST to have on energy storage. I think there's a misconception that when we speak of batteries, it's only the lithium. Mm. There are other technologies that are being pushed, uh, fuel cell, for example, uh, to make this possible. Uh, we're mindful of this. That's why we're also in coordination with the DENR. The end goal really is sustainability, and uh, that's very right. Uh, and in terms of the concern, I, I have to go back to another question. Uh, yes, the grid can accommodate uh, the increase in utilization of electric vehicles. In fact, there is a space for uh, electric vehicles to come in because they will provide an opportunity to further stabilize the grid. Uh, because the vehicles will be parked. If it's for private, it's parked during peak hours. So they are essentially supporting. There's a potential for them to support our concern. I think in, in Luzon, we did have a concern earlier this year. Uh, if we did have a substantial number of EVs during that period, they would have augmented our reserve capability. So all of this is being factored in, and we're glad that the DPI and EVAP is here. They are our partners in making this a reality. Nandalam uh, lang kami with the USEC and DOI, particularly on incentives. It's very clear <laughs> that incentives are very much needed, and I hope we will work together in providing those incentives to get EVs on a higher scale. Thank you so much. Maraming salamat din po sa inyo, Director Patrick Aquino. Okay, so to cap our uh, discussion, may I request our speakers uh, to give their um, final words? Uh, may I? May we start uh, uh, from you, Mao? Any any final words that you would like to say to our uh, audience? I uh, just uh, would like to thank uh, everyone for uh, joining us in this uh, webinar. And I'd like to thank, of course, um, the discussants, Music Fita and Mr. Araga. Um, I learned a lot from, from your presentation and also from the um, discussions. Um, and also our uh, guests from the DOE also for <laughs> Are responding sa, to some of the questions for you know we, we were clarified with some of the issues uh yeah thank you good afternoon to all thank you too mao um you said Peter? <laughs> yeah um wait uh, okay thank you uh thank you sheila well uh let me uh also uh share that uh if you recall um the, among the priorities that i mentioned uh battery battery storage, recycling was also um, uh, among uh, our list of uh, priorities. So we're really tackling the issue in a very comprehensive way, trying to understand, trying to find ways by which uh, we would be able to uh, attain an inclusive, sustainable, and a more uh, resilient uh, growth. Um, And um, I I think my next point is that uh, the future auto is really going to be autonomous. It's going to be electric connected and shared. And I hope that we could all work very closely together. We could collaborate, coordinate as we try to build 
the ecosystem that would promote this industry. Thank you very much, Ms. Tite. Of course, last but not the least, Mr. Edmund Araga, sir, thank you very much. May, may we have uh, some final words from you, sir? Well, no man, no man is an island. Uh, we need to be uh, to be as one uh, in in uh, addressing concerns of each and every industry, and we're very um, grateful uh, with the help of the, our partners with the government sector, such as uh, Yusek Fita and Sir Patrick Aquino, on our side. Uh, at least uh, step by step, we were uh, making this. Uh, industry happen and can be felt uh, by the consumers and we really want to not only on our advocacy on promoting the English but more so on the future of our uh, next generation uh, that we, uh, we 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 vouch into it that um, we're looking at at their direction that sana makita pa nila yung magandang uh, langit, magandang kinabukasan through our efforts. And with this kind of study, uh, Ms. Roselion, uh, we're very thankful that uh, you were able to consider uh, electric vehicles in particular as, a, as your study and the industry needs it. Uh, our key, our role here is to help educate people on what, what can we do in the society. Uh, as a whole. Thank you very much. And thank you very much, yeah, sir. Sure, sure. Go I add okay, um, okay. Sana yun, just you, para to everyone. Yun. Um, sana, well, hopefully this webinar can also encourage um, the researchers uh, from uh, other organizations and institutes to uh, do conduct a study on, on the EVs and its uh, affiliate um affiliate, uh, yeah, uh, affiliated uh, sectors um uh, i think yun naman yun, isang, um one of the reasons why we do study also is uh, to not add, not on to add the lit to the literature but also um parang encourage and uh, promote um parang mga studies that would uh, look further into issues in the industry and other aspects of the academy. Yeah. Thank you. Sana meron pa ibang gumawa na sa dito. And and then hopefully through uh tamaka hopefully through our webinar we would uh we can encourage more uh, researchers, practitioners to uh you know uh look into the other issues in the EV industry. Um Ma'am Pita a while ago during her presentation has shown us, you know, her list of uh, wish list ni Mang Pita yon ano, Mang Pita, ng mga research uh, areas for research and hopefully through this ano may may mag-aral pa tungkol sa ating um, EV industry and hopefully this uh, webinar too will um, encourage our policymakers really to to fast track those uh, mga pending bills in Congress. Sana no, sana sir. Uh, Edmund, at sana mga pita, sana ma-fast track yung mga bills na yon. So, at sana hindi rin, ano, um, dependent sa kung sino man ang nakaupo, ano. <laughs> okay, we have uh, an uh, election next year and hopefully hindi naman maapektuhan yung mga legis proposed legislation natin uh, sa Congress. Okay. Okay, so at this point, friends, please join me in thanking our speakers, Ms. Maureen Rosalion of uh, PIDS, Undersecretary Rafaelita Aldaba of the DTI, and uh, EVAP uh, President, Mr. Um, Edmund Aranga, for the valuable information and insights that they, they have shared with us this afternoon. And thank you also to Director Patrick Aquino of the Department of Energy for taking the time to participate in the open forum. Maraming salamat sa inyong lahat. So let us give them a big virtual clap and thank you to all our participants who shared their insights as well as as uh, thought-provoking uh, questions during the open forum. Thank you. Okay, so before we finally close, I just uh, I wish to announce the three winners of our poll for this week. So they are Josel Dimakuta, Oliver De Samito, and Cherise Duarte. I repeat, uh, Josel Dimakuta. Utak, Oliver, Desamich, and 
Cherries uh, Duarte, you won in our uh, draw for this week. And uh, the webinar team of PIDS will get in touch with you for the delivery of your prize. Okay. And finally, we have some reminders. Okay. So uh, you can access the presentation of Mao as well as those of um, um, Mr. Araga and uh, Yusek Pita from uh, the PIDS website. So flash on the screen is the link to our uh, uh, seminar, uh, um, to our uh, PIDS website um, uh, seminars. Okay. And also, please answer the feedback form that will pop on your screen after this event. Um, your comments are important to us to improve our webinars and also um, regularly visit our website and social media pages. So we would like to thank all those who have shown in our uh, Facebook page and uh, those who also followed our live, uh, live tweets on our uh, Twitter page. And flash on the screen is our uh, remaining webinar for the month of July. So on July 28, we will have a, another public webinar um, entitled Less Noise, More Facts, Inform Improving Information Dissemination for a Better Normal. So we will have presentations and discussions on the uh, phenomenon of uh, disinformation and how we can combat, combat it. Okay, and finally, we would like to thank all the representatives uh, from the government, from the academe, uh, private sector, civil society, and um, international organizations who join us today. Maraming salamat po. So this concludes our uh, webinar for this week. Uh, stay safe, stay, he stay healthy, and stay informed too. See you on July 28 for our next webinar. Thank you and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.